Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty be upon one and all. Today we will be discussing a very important subject once again, and that is the issue of dealing with one another and business ethics taught by the Messenger, may peace be upon him, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We need to know that in order to survive, everyone needs to earn. Everyone needs some form of wealth. And this wealth is achieved in different ways. Some people work for others, whilst others are traders. In all this, we need to know there are ethics. We need to have sound ethics of business. Firstly, the messenger teaches us to be considerate of the one who is buying. Which means, when we are selling some goods, yes, we are allowed to make a markup, we are allowed, we are allowed to make a profit, but there is something known as blessings, which means if I've made, say, a thousand dollars from one deal, have I made that thousand with the one who has given it to me, giving it to me wholeheartedly, going away happy? If that is the case, the way I make use of that one thousand will be much blessed. I will achieve from it much more than what another person would achieve from oh, ten thousand, because I have blessings. People have gone home, they've used the commodity I've given them. Say it was a refrigerator or an air conditioner. What would happen is as they're using it, they are happy. It cools the room. The deal was good. The next time they pass another shop besides ours, they see the same thing. They find it $5 more. So what they purchased it for was $5 less. They will smile and say, I got a good deal. That smile and that Feeling is an automatic prayer for the one who has sold that particular item, which would happen to be us. So what would happen, we need to know very importantly. The blessings are far more important than the deal itself. So never rip somebody off. Like, sadly, what happens, a person has a price for some goods that they are selling, and they will tell you as you enter, this is $200. And as they are speaking to you, a man looking very rich, smelling very rich, walks in. And they, he asks, how much is this? And they happen to look at him, top to toe, and then they say, $250. Well, where did the 50 come from? That is snatching away the blessings of that deal. Just because of what he looks like, you want to charge him more. As Muslims, we are taught that that is wrong, incorrect, unacceptable. You're snatching the blessings away from your deal. In fact, if you want to drop a price because of someone walking in, then you may do so. But to raise the price is wrong. We ask the Almighty to grant us blessings. What we also need to know is, the hadith or the saying of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, رحم الله مرئن سمحا إذا باع سمحا إذا اشترى The Almighty has mercy upon he who is considerate of the buyer when selling and considerate of the seller when buying. This means, just like I would like a deal, I need to give somebody else the same deal. So when I am buying my goods, I do not squeeze the young man who is selling this product so much that he also has not made a profit. He has family, he has responsibilities, he has duties, he's looking for a good deal. So we should deal in such a way that yes, it's a good deal for us. And at the same time, he goes away happy. He is smiling, he's made his profit, perhaps not as much as he wanted, but there is some form of a profit and he goes away happy. However, if we were inconsiderate and we squeezed him to the last cent, he may go home having sold a lot, but having made nothing, and his children are looking at him, and his wife is looking at him, and his bills are not paid, and his fees not paid, yet had we given him that wealth, indirectly we would be assisting someone to live a life. They would be, we would be contributing towards the school fees of their children, towards the lights and the water bill and so on. This is some deep thinking we need to engage in when buying and selling. Look at the man, think for yourself. This man, I need to help him pay his bills as well. So why must I squeeze him so much? I can sell it, I can make a slightly less profit, no problem. But at the same time, we do not want to destroy the link that we have with our own maker solely because we want to make a dollar. And this is why the Almighty has mentioned to us in so many places that this business that we deal with one another, we should not cheat. Destruction be upon those who shortchange others. When they are shortchanged, what is the meaning of this? Which means when we are counting for ourselves, we count more. And when we are counting against ourselves, we count less. A person has a smaller deal this way and a bigger deal the other way. Why is that the case? 
the messenger peace be upon him once went into the market and he put his hand into some dates at that time they were selling dates in the market and when he put his hand into the dates he noticed bad dates at the bottom and the good dates at the top so people would come in and order the dates looking at the top and maybe perhaps tasting one or two and they would say give me so much of this and so much of that and what would happen is as the dates were being put into their bags the bad dates from the bottom were being put in so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned this man and he said man ghashana falaysa minna Whoever cheats us is not from amongst us. Whoever wants to engage in this type of deception cannot claim to be a Muslim. Now today you have some businessmen, very faithfully, they might pray five times a day. They might have a good link according to them with their maker. But they write a check knowing that I don't have the funds. Sometimes intentionally mis-signing, signing a wrong signature just to buy some time. Is that a Muslim? Is that what we've been taught? That is very sad. Yet you find this happening amongst people who are supposed to be good. People whose religion teaches them the highest of ethics and standards and morals. And yet they have dropped them and they have degraded themselves to the lowest of low. And this is why the verse comes to mind where the Almighty says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ ثُمَّ رَدَدَنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا We have created man in the best postures. And then we have reduced them to the lowest of the low, except those who believe and do good deeds. And remember, believing alone is not enough. We need to do good deeds. Otherwise, what is the difference between us and animals? Sometimes the animals do not cheat each other as much as we do. And this is why you will know that a farmer who is feeding the animals every day at 6 o'clock, the animals develop such a liking towards that man that the minute they see him, they rush towards him. What about us? We need to develop that type of a link and even better than that with the rest of humankind. When people walk past your shop or your business, they want to greet you. When they see you, they can comment a good comment. Today, people see each other and they say, watch out, that man, stay away from him. Watch out, this one, stay away from him. Watch out, that one, stay away from him. Be careful about this one. Why should this be? Yes, if we have engaged in correct and upright business ethics, nothing of this nature will happen. Now, I'd like to end by making mention of something very important. To get a little bit of wealth through clandestine means, through the wrong way, is not difficult. But what is poisonous is the result of that, because when we put that into our mouths, as Muslims we are taught that it contaminates the whole system. The whole system is nurtured from that which is prohibited. So I've eaten something nice. Say for example I've had a meal. That meal was from money that I had extorted from someone or robbed or cheated them in one way or deceived them even if they gave it willingly but for as long as they were deceived that money is dirty when I purchased a meal for my family with dirty money what we are taught is they will eat it when they eat it it has a negative effect on the esophagus you know the stomach and the intestines the entire digestive system the enzymes everything is cursing this human being and on top of that, the energy derived, you know, the energy that is derived, the, the flesh that is grown through that which we ate, which was earned in clandestine means, will not be used in something spiritual or good. So we have energy with our hands. We are not happy when we touch that which is permissible. We will only be quenched when we touch that which is not allowed. We are not happy when we look at what is allowed for us. We will only be quenched when we look at that which is prohibited. Why? Because we've eaten that which is what we call haram, that which is prohibited, dirty, filthy. So our eyes cannot be satisfied except through a filthy way. Our brains are contaminated that we can't think straight. This is why the Quran says, الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ الرِّبَا لَا يَقُومُونَ إِلَّا كَمَا يَقُومُ الَّذِي يَتَخَبَّطُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسِّ a person who consumes usury and interest, and you know as Muslims, we firmly believe that that is haram, it's prohibited, because interest makes the rich richer and the poor poorer. You've got money, you can lend it out, people who are poor will work for you forever and ever to give you more and more, and they have less and less. And it is something that is very broad, a very broad topic, but in a nutshell, when a person eats dirty wealth, they get up or they can only stand in a condition of the one who is possessed. 
by the devil. Which means they are not happy when they look at their own wives, but when they see other women, they are excited and happy. It quenches their eyes. They cannot be happy when they touch something which is legitimate, but when they touch that which is prohibited, they are happy. They are excited. When they think, they can only think awkward. They were only happy with dirty thoughts, but the clean thoughts do not come into their minds. Similarly, when they have to judge between people, their minds are sometimes blown apart. They don't know how to think. They cannot see simple mathematics. One plus one to them is not two. Why? Because they don't have the brain. To them, they cannot see that this person is right and this is wrong because they have nourished that brain with that which is prohibited. The reason why we believe this is in order for us to realize that we, the importance of clinging very solidly to that which is permissible and full of blessings. And this is why we say there is a lot to be learned when it comes to business ethics. We are supposed to be the most upright, very clear. Imagine when we are selling a motor vehicle, a true believer would be saying, you know what, I've made an accident, it was damaged here, the car looks brand new, it is a beautiful vehicle, but I need to tell you the three defects it has. Here you are, if you want it, take it, if you don't want it, leave it. That's a true believer. Whereas you have a person who might claim to believe, saying, no, nothing wrong, no accident, no nothing, beautiful car. It was better for that person to say, here's the vehicle, look at it nicely, if you like it, take it, if you don't, leave it. That's even a better statement than that. So we need to choose. And the result of it will be either we are blessed or we lose blessings. The choice is yours. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.